Hello and welcome to Unit 10, Outlier Removal and Model Training. In previous unit, you have learned how to fine-tune selection of fields and rows in model dataset and how to remove nulls. In this unit, we will cover the next two steps of model building process. More specifically, in the Outlier Removal step, you will learn how to identify outliers and how to remove them. We will discuss impact of long tail fields and options how to deal with them. In the second part of the unit, we will use the resulting dataset for actual model training. So let's start with outlier removal. Purpose of the step is to reduce noise and complexity of the data by identification and removal of outliers. If you think that your data are good enough, or you prefer training machine learning model on existing data even with possible noise, you can skip this step. Unlike previous step, steps, this step is optional. Input to these steps are data coming from previous steps, which are cleared from nulls. Output of this step will go to the next training setting step and will be used for training machine learning model. Outlier removal process is typically iterative process. First, we will see information about number of, of outliers, which are determined based on initial settings of outlier thresholds. Since outliers are removed by removing rows that contain them, we need to decide if overall accumulative impact of removing all outliers from all fields is acceptable. If the impact is acceptable, then we press the Remove Outlier button and once new copy of data is created, we can proceed to the next step. If the impact is not acceptable, we can change the settings of the thresholds. And to get numbers of outliers recalculated based on new settings, we will again we'll need to press the Remove Outliers button. We can repeat this until overall impact on dataset is acceptable or in any point in time, we can simply decide to skip the step. Let's go and try it out. In the previous unit, we stopped in null removal step after all nulls got handled. So we can go now to the next step. In outlier removal screen, we can see again red crumb indicator moved. But this time, the next button in navigation toolbar is enabled. So if you want, we can go to the next step without doing any outlier handling. But please be aware that behavior of this button depends on the activation of outlier checkbox. If I mark it, the next button will get disabled and explicit outlier removal will be required. We will get there, but let's first get familiar with the screen layout. This clip help text remind us that we will need to configure outlier settings and then use the remove outlier button again, as usually. Next in the screen, there is list of the fields. This part of screen looks similar like the filtering data screen, but the table shows different information. Now we see here outlier threshold, number of outliers and percentage of outliers. Also, please notice that if I select the key field, then the chart sections, it will show some errors. You can ignore it, it's just visual defect. Anyway, we know from filtering data screen that key field does not show the chart. So if you, if you see this error, then just select different field and it will disappear. Underneath, as usually, we see action button and information about the dataset size and total number of rows to be removed is zero because activation of outlier removal is off. Now let's get familiar with the outlier information in the table and let's sort the table by number of outliers. And we see that product specification has 36 outliers given the default threshold 1%. In the chart, we see that it has also many distinct values, but most of them have frequency of occurrence less than 1%. 
This is the reason for the big number of, of outliers. It is even more clear in double alpha view. So there is practically only one link for value. The rest is dummy hash symbol for the NL for the unassigned values and the rest are the real values. Next, let's check the product field. This field has typical long tail data distribution. Some fields are occurring frequently, some very rarely. In case of real life data, number of rarely occurring data can be very big. If this field is not critical for the purpose or the use case, I recommend to remove this field from dataset. But for prediction of quote success, the product field is quite critical and must be preserved. In this case, the recommendation is to cut off the thinnest end of the tail. In other words, to remove outliers but with less aggressive threshold. As general practice, we want to keep more data in the categorical field, we need to decrease the threshold. Let's say that in this case, we want to remove only these items that have a frequency of occurrence 0.21 or less, and those having frequency of occurrence 0.43 and above we want to keep. This way we would be removing in total 13 items. But changing outlier threshold is not possible while the outlier removal activation checkbook is off. So let's turn it on. Okay, the, threshold, the thresholds are available now. Also, we may notice the total number of rows to be removed has changed to 136. This is cumulative impact of outlier removal on dataset with current settings. One remark, this number can be less than actual sum of all outliers in all fields. This can happen if outliers of different fields are on the same row. But anyway, this number of outliers is simply too many. This data set is small enough and losing 30% of data due to outlier removal is too much. As a general rule, I suggest sacrificing 10% of data at most, ideally even less. Even less. Okay, so the current settings are a little bit too aggressive. What can we do? There are several options. Let's go case by case. And let's start with the product field and change its threshold as discussed to 0.3. To see the effect of this threshold change, we need to press the remove outliers button. We see the total number of rows removed has decreased and indeed number of outliers in this field has changed to 13. Moreover, if we switch from original data to modified data, tap, we can see even new data distribution. The long tail is gone. Please notice that if we change the threshold to zero, then all data will be kept. If number of listing values in the field is not too big, then this approach is more suitable. Which, by the way, is the case of this data in this demo. However, in the real life production data, we will often deal with very long tails. And to get the complexity of data under control, you will need to find the right values of the outside threshold. Good. Let's go back to the top of the list. The product specification field is not particularly useful, so it is best to have this field removed. Unfortunately, this screen doesn't offer this option. So either we need to go back to the filtering data step and remove it here, or we go just to the non-removal step and make the use of the fact 
then the advance of the now arrival method is removed by field. Let's do this. In product specification, we change the method from replace now to remove fields and press the remove now button again to update local copy of the data. When this is done, you can go back and see that the product specification is gone. Total number of rows to be removed has decreased significantly. And we have here on top two numeric fields now. If you recall, numeric outliers are determined as three sigma interval around mean value. Unfortunately, we do not have mean value and interval visualized in this chart. But as you can see, frequency of the last pin is 19, which is exactly the number of determined outliers. So this bin is obviously outside the three sigma interval and the rest of data is within the interval. Again, by changing the threshold, we can change width of the interval. As general practice, enlarging sigma multiplier will enlarge the interval. For this data set, I prefer to keep all numeric values. So I change the threshold to, let's say, Nine. And I do it for all numeric fields. This way, I keep all numeric values. And when it is done, we see the total number of rows to be removed has decreased under 10% of original data, which is good. So we can end up with outlier removal here. As I have already explained, all main outlier removal options which are, let me repeat, in case of not too many distinct values, that's just a fill threshold and keep all data. In case of long tail fields, adjust the fill threshold and then remove only the tiniest part of the tail. In case of non-critical fields, remove the fields. And the last option is to skip outlier steps completely. This option makes sense, especially in case of small data set, which is exactly our case. So to avoid training overfitted model, I will proceed to the next step with outlier removal off. The training setting is the last model building step. There is no the next button anymore. And as the screen text says, you can specify here how the model is trained. All these settings were, were already explained in Unit 7, Scenario Training Settings. So let's just quickly review them again. First, there is information what machine learning algorithm will be used for model training. Unfortunately, algorithm can't be changed in the model. To use the scenario with different algorithm, you can create a copy of scenario and set a new algorithm there. For the new scenario, however, the model building process must be repeated. On the right hand side, we see algorithm parameters. Typically, you don't need to change them. In your quest for the best train model, you will want to try first to do different field selection. You will want to include more data parts. 
in different rep data representation or try different null removal or outlier removal settings. But if you get to the stage that nothing else helps, then you can try different algorithm parameters and see an effect. For instance, increase of number of, number of estimators might be theoretically helpful in case of very complex data. But in general, effect of change parameters is hard to predict. PCA, PCA or principal component analysis is experimental feature which works only on numeric fields. You would need to try and see if the settings has effect. Data split influence only how much of the data will be used for actual model training and how much will be used of the data for the model evaluation. Model is trained and evaluated on the different set of the data always. Okay, this explanation concludes content of this unit. In the next unit, we will continue with actual model training. Now, let's just summarize what we have learned in this unit. In outlier removal step, you have learned that values identified as outliers are removed by removing rows that contain them. And since outliers are identified for each field separately, then cumulative effect of removal of all outliers can be significant. In general, total number of rows to be removed is equal or less than sum of all outliers for all fields, because some outliers can be on the same field. Next, you have seen how categorical outliers are identified based on predefined thresholds. The threshold is adjustable. If you want to do more aggressive outlier removal, then you must increase the threshold. To have more tolerant outlier removal, then the threshold must be decreased. Setting the threshold to 0% will not perform outlier removal for a particular field at all. In such a case, all field values are considered as valid values. Next. You have seen that numerical outliers are identified based on three sigma interval around mean value. Increasing the sigma multiplier will make the interval wider and more tolerant. Then we discussed purpose of the last step of the model building process, training settings. This summary concludes this unit, in which you have learned how to identify outliers and how to remove them. We have learned of impact of long tails fields and options how to deal with them. In the second part of the unit, we have reviewed training setting screens as the last step before actual model training. In the next unit, we will conclude model building process by explaining how to monitor model training process how to evaluate quality of model and how to select the model for next machine learning phase for making predictions. Thank you for your attention and let's meet again in unit 11, model training results and life cycle.